Hey everybody, I'm Dino, DP cameraman for This Old House, taking you behind the scenes, sneak a little preview. Don't tell anyone we did this, it's our little tour. Uh, I know everybody likes to watch television, but we also listen to it too, which is why I'm here with the man, Jim Keeney, audio for This Old House, Ask This Old House, and a longer list than we get time for right now, but let's talk about uh, This Old House, and let's talk about Jim Keeney. How did you, when, when did you first fall in love with audio and say, audio, I, I must do more of this? Uh, I grew up playing music, um, so by the time I was into high school, I was playing in bands, and um, I decided to do a two-year school after that, so I got uh, into a recording arts program, and that led to working in radio, so that was my first like audio job, so I did that for about a decade, and then I kind of did some other things like um, live sound for uh, some some uh, at some local venues and uh, worked at some recording studios, opened my own recording studio, and then eventually found my way into production sound for like TV and film and commercials. Now, I know for myself, for a cameraman, this old house has many different challenges that nobody else has. What's some of the typical challenges every day you come in that, that you face? Doing audio on this old house is pretty interesting. It's unlike any other show I've worked on because it's we're on an active construction site, so. Yeah. Um, you know, it can be dangerous at times. You have to really watch where you're going and make sure you're not getting in the way too much. And um, But as far as audio goes, um, we pretty much wire everybody up with like a wireless lavalier. So I'm basically just making sure that everyone who has a wireless on uh, sounds good, nice and clean. You can't see it because we try to hide it on the show. And um, yeah, just making sure that um, everybody on the crew, the director, producer, crew, everybody can hear the audio, you know, the yeah. best it can possibly be. And it's interesting on this show because there's all, so much noise in this show in the background, there's hammering and sawing. And this was the first show that I worked on where I realized I could actually let some of that fly because, you know, yeah. it's, it's part of what we're doing and, you know, yeah. it makes sense to hear that in the background. I mean, that's one of the challenges of the job is, is discerning which, which noise is acceptable and which noise might not be acceptable. Um, so if a plane suddenly flies overhead, uh, that might be something where we would want to stop and wait for it to, to clear before we continue. Um, but yeah, like if it's uh, sawing or hammering, a lot of times we just let that go because it makes sense in, you know, in the show, in the context of the show. So Jim, between the technology and your knowledge, there is a lot of trust that gets put in your hands each and every day. Oh yeah, well, yeah, so I mean, I actually have the ability to like listen to everybody's microphones, so a lot of my friends and family sometimes will ask me like, oh, like, do you ever hear any like, really juicy stuff going on in the background. Um, but the reality no. is, is I, no, the reality is, is like a lot of it's not juicy. And sometimes it's like things you don't really want to hear. It's, you know, people, you know, maybe hitting the bathroom in between scenes or maybe they're taking a, an important phone call or something like that. So I really have no interest in hearing that. Plus I don't want to hear multiple things going on in my ears. Um, so yeah, I, I, I give people their privacy. I don't want them to ever feel like I'm listening for whatever reason. Uh, I'll do a wellness check here and there if we're about to go into a scene. I'll I, before I'm broadcasting anyone's mics out to the crew and everybody on set. I'll check in on each one and make sure it still sounds clean. It hasn't moved around. You know, it's it's sure. still there. It's still even working. Yeah. Um, because sometimes batteries die, things like that. So, yeah, the key to getting the trust is you know not making it weird. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like sure. I think that's really it. Well, I know you've got a very specific toy. I had a little pack on the side of the camera or two or three or more. Mm -hmm. And I know you've got a specific uh, pack. So why don't, can we talk about your kit? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So this is my mixer bag. Um, I typically wear this bag on my body with the harness here. I got little straps and um, it's all battery powered. So I'm, you know, completely mobile. I can go anywhere with this. Um, the way this is laid out is this is the mixer here. So instead of like a mixing board with like long faders, they're just knobs instead. This can take 12 inputs. So we could actually have 12 people on mic and record them through this recorder here. Um, these are the receivers. So the wireless packs like this go on each of the cast members' bodies. And I'll just show you the other end here. This is the end. There's a little mount for it. And typically use some kind of an adhesive. And we'll just kind of hide it on the inside of the clothing. You wouldn't see the cable hanging out. It would go underneath the shirt, but you get the idea. And uh, the pack usually goes in their back pocket or just somewhere hidden. And um, what's great about this is if you look down here, this is Kevin's mic we were using earlier today. It's, it's sending out my main mix to, to the camera and uh, to everybody's ears on their wireless systems. But uh, it records each lavalier on a separate individual track, which is nice for um, post-production if they need it 
because uh, a lot of times there could be three people on camera, one of them's talking, two of them might be working, banging hammers or something or doing, you know, maybe they're just like fidgeting, they're touching their mic and making it, you know, sort of uh, sound scratchy. So post can actually go in and just pick the individual tracks of each person's microphone that they want to hear at that exact moment, which is great. It just gives them some freedom in post. Um, and then down here, this is a, a transmitter pack. It looks just like uh, these ones that go on the talent. And this sends out to camera. So that's how camera's hearing my mix. And uh, from the camera, we send a mix to the crew. And the director uh, sends a mix from his microphone to the cameraman. And as you can see, this adds up pretty fast with uh, all these different wireless systems that we have going on here. So, um, but this is my, this is my baby here. This is the bag and this is what I'm using day to day on this old house. Awesome, Jim. I never had anything this sophisticated. I had to add receivers to the camera mm -hmm. and use splitters, things I don't, I don't miss. Yeah. I don't miss and, it at and all. And like the camera's not heavy enough on its own. <laughs> yeah, Going to put a whole bunch exactly. of audio stuff Let's on top some, of it. Yeah. Well, I would say to them, is somebody get a sandbag that can throw on this? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's 24 pounds right. between yeah. friends? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I think the other big challenge that, that I had when I did audio, or, or even with the camera, and I know you have, um, we come up to people and so many of our guests have never been on television. Mm -hmm. They've never, they've never done anything like this. You're trying to put a microphone mm -hmm. where it's hidden in their shirt, and I've got a big camera in their face. So yeah. you have an approach that, that works every time, and it's so important you and I put them at ease. Yeah, I think uh, you can typically feel the energy on somebody when you approach them with a microphone, like after you do, you've been doing it long enough. So instantly I can tell if the person's sort of is kind of like a little hesitant or whatever. Sometimes they're all about it. Like, oh yeah, throw it on there. Like, you know, they're doing this like like they're getting frisked or something. Yeah. You're like, no, 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 it's not going to be like that invasive. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, you know, some people are a little more timid about it. So I just try to do my best job to explain who I am, introduce myself and show them what it is, how it's going to go on them. Because we do hide the mic. So it, I guess it's somewhat invasive because you have to probably, you know, drop a, a cable down inside of your clothing. Um, but yeah, it's, I think it's just about communication. It's about making sure that they they get it, you know? And then yeah. then at that point, they're usually like, oh, okay, I get it. And they just help you out and make it happen, so. Yeah. And you know they're comfortable because by the end of it, they hand your microphone back. They take it off themselves. They've already <laughs> figured that out, which I'm like, no, don't touch the mics. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's helpful. Sometimes it's, it's uh, you know, here's a big ball of spaghetti back. And you're like, oh, great, thanks yeah. for helping. <laughs> I know in a normal day, and whenever I did audio, uh, and in somewhat of a typical day, we'll have you know two microphones, three, even four. And for you with your technology, not a problem. But we just recently wrapped in Westerly, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. And I know we went beyond the four, we oh, went yeah. beyond the five, and oh. looking at the expression on your face, <laughs> we went beyond that. How many did you end up setting up that day? Yeah, that was a hectic shoot. I think we hit um, 13 channels 13. of wireless, <laughs> just for audio, and then there's wireless video as well. Um, but yeah, I think we had 10 people wearing labs and I think we had our three three other channels which we used to uh, send my mix to the camera. Um, and then we send a mix to the crew so they can all hear on their wireless headsets. And then we send a, uh, a feed from the director's microphone to your ear so he yep. can tell you yeah. what to, how to frame it up and stuff like that for camera shots. But yeah, that was a that was a hectic shoot. The rap, the rap shoots are always kind of like that because it's always like, you know, the whole cast plus the homeowners plus maybe the apprentices. So yeah. it adds up fast. But um, yeah, coordinating and making sure all the different frequencies like mathematically will jive. That's that's kind of part of the part of the uh, the challenge there. But it worked out. Came out awesome. Fine. Yeah. Awesome. And from the comments we get, people enjoy the show. And that's mm -hmm. that, that's that's what we like to hear. Yeah, I think the, the what they say is like if no one notices, you, no one notice, notices the sound, uh, you're probably doing a good job. Yeah. You don't want to get noticed. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'm not going to notice you anymore. Oh, good. So that's <laughs> the way it should be. <laughs> now, listen, I hope you enjoyed this video talking with the man, Jim Keeney. Uh, send us your comments. Let us know what you think. Let us know if uh, you'd like to see more. Let me know who else you'd like to talk to in the cast and uh, crew. It's all great. great Maybe I'll people. interview you on the next one. I hope so. You've been doing <laughs> camera for how many years? 20 something? Uh, only 20. Only yeah. 20. Okay. Yeah. Only the 20. first 20. Only 20. The last 20. Yeah. All right. Cool. Great hanging with Jim. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Talk to you next time.